how to maintain sexual purity while you were dating to be married hmm this one eh i had to people somehow because last last but did not be firewood but it's actually possible and it get plenty of advantages so it's doable it's possible if it's not possible trust me god is not going to put us up to a tax that we will not be able to carry out because at the end of the day he's a loving kind and merciful father who wants us to prosper and succeed in everything we do including our marriages okay so how do we maintain this sexual purity number one set boundaries set boundaries in the way you relate with your spouses i mean why you they smell what you're never ready to chop no go start to the kiss the neck they do all those things some people go say i'm not going to penetrate me could just help body you know say no easy yeah, i'm not saying no easy yeah. but it should be say is it that you're doing this or you're not doing it you say you don't want penetration, you don't want the boy, you don't do every every you wouldn't remain at just that penetration at the end of the day you're having sex we could tell ourselves the truth though. when you're visiting each other don't stay too long you go the jeez 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 go bring this jeez come bring that one come before you know night don't come you can't need to sleep for the house which it is a go happen especially when you're highly attracted to each other which by the way you should be because i mean you're planning on getting married to someone you should be sexually attracted to that person because that is one of the ingredients that will make your marriage last longer so when you know that you're sexually attracted to this person you actually love this person so to speak you shouldn't put yourselves in a compromising position you know you go they come together they rob body you know you don't go past the night you go change clothes maybe now one room safe no privacy you they see you they work out they shake body they go it is saying be firewood then be iron you go shake now I understand in our society of today everybody is like sex sells sex sells you know even common toothpaste adverts they go share put one woman and one man where they do love you love you for dear you know just to advertise roll-on cologne perfumes you see them like putting people who are almost like literally having sex in the adverts so society social media and every medium you can think about you know they advertise a lot of sex so it's not easy to actually maintain this purity but is it possible absolutely and in setting this boundary is not only about setting boundary with your partner alone also setting boundaries within yourself because the truth of the matter be saying, you figure they talk, say, you know, they knack, you know, no man, no man, you know, they do them. Maybe you still be virgin and everything, but inside your mind, you don't do and finish. All the stars, then you don't do and finish. That is not sexual purity. There is a blessing attached to sexual purity. That is when you truly maintain this purity. Because you can't say you're maintaining purity and in your mind, you're already, you know, having all of the affairs. You're, you masturbate, you watch porn, you say, yes, I know they do one. She knows say I never do one. But in your mind, you're already doing it. The Bible says that he that looks upon a woman and lost after her is already guilty of the sin of fornication so you don't need to literally like do it with your partner if you do it in your mind and in your in your closet when nobody they see you maybe you'll be born again for church brother 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 but inside your house you did you know you did do and steady down one eh it's not sexual purity number two there has to be an agreement before you embark on this journey you have to agree amongst yourself that yes we want to maintain this celibacy until we are married so one person cannot be all about celibacy and the other person is about no i want it now i want it now there's going to be disagreement so you need to sit down and have an agreement that is the whole essence of dating yeah if it is something that is going to be achievable by the two of you, then you put your mind and heart together and pursue this purity. And if your partner decides to leave you because you've decided to stay celibate until you're married, and he or she decides to leave you and doesn't want to be in that relationship with you or doesn't want to cut you anymore, then good radiance. Because it should be seen, that person that would not be able to be patient and be disciplined and stay with you for this period of dating before you get married, what are the guarantees that this person is going to be faithful to you when you're eventually married? Think about it. Just six months or, or maybe three months or, or maybe one year, self. You say, no, feel whole body, no, feel whole body. They do you, they do you wrong. Go say, no, do again. Make it a go. That one no be keeper. Oh. No, no, no. That one no be keeper. You go cheat. But as a lady, don't be hot. Don't be crying that, eh, why are they always leaving me? Or maybe you'll be like, eh, let me I just give her now. They always leave me. If I let me just give it to him, I should be eventually I'm going to marry him. Nothing like that, sister. Except you know that you're not truly, truly up for the tax. 
because it has to be about you. People shouldn't be embarking on journeys that you're not really convinced about. Don't do things because you go to church and your pastor is telling you to do something. For me, I don't do that. Okay, I have to be convinced about something. I'm a kind of person that I have a very, very curious mind. If you tell me something, I'll go hear you. I know they argue, but I'll do my, make my findings. And when I'm convinced in my heart and I look this matter, say, yeah, this one would favor me or this one good do, then I do it. So don't just embark on the purity journey because your pastor says so. Be convinced in your heart and in your mind and in your soul that this is something that you feel is going to benefit you in the long run and it's going to strengthen your character. So when you feel that way, you embark on the journey. Otherwise, do not do that. And I am not in any way saying you should go ahead and embark on premarital sex because that one self, again, you could know my channel. If you're new to my channel anyways, you're highly welcome. Now it's will they talk about be this. You can check out my other videos. You know what I stand for. I'm not going to tell you to, you know, embark on premarital sex because that is even more dangerous for you. So as they watch me, so they talk, try and make you subscribe and like this video so that it can be recommended to other people and promote my work and support this sister. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. He that cannot stay with you because he doesn't want to be patient or she doesn't want to be patient, but you know, before I would be wrong, go let them go. They are not for you. Your own person, and when you come, you serve, you go, no. You go feel down, you go know. Number three, define your relationship. People don't date forever. Define your relationship. No go they say now my fiance be this. You go they do fiance two years, three years. What thing be that? You don't put you for sale. You don't put you for prison. You don't do that. I don't believe that relationship should be indefinite. You know, when you embark on a relationship and then this person proposes to you, or you guys or both of you agree that you're going to get married, there should be a time frame that you're dating. There should be a date, in fact, for your wedding. All right, set a date. If you know you're not ready to be married, don't go and propose to any lady. Wait until you know you're ready so that the moment when you don't propose, you know, you set the date and then you look forward to that occasion. You look forward to that date. Because there's an adage in my language that says that a hunger that has hope, not a kill person. You know, make a talk, make a talk and do a different language. And that one, I the sweet pass for you. They say, I go on with Lilanya and he will mad. So the direct translation is that a hunger that has hope, there's an expectation that you're going to eat eventually. That hunger will not kill you. But when you're hungry and there is no hope and there is no expectation that you're going to get food in the nearest future, then that hunger will not kill you. You know, that's just the way it is. So set a date. Don't just date indefinitely so that you look forward to that day. So when the temptation comes, when the feeling comes, and when you feel it so strongly that you want to do this, and you remember, say, ah, October 1st. Or you remember, say, ah, December 22nd. Where you could just, you know, your mind go do, you could go, no, say that day. <laughs> Within I go carry your IC for this street. So it's better when you have hope in the foreseeable nearest future that you're going to eventually knock. It's better. That way you'll be able to maintain this sexual purity. And number four, flee youthful lust. The Bible says flee youthful lust. You don't say fight them. You know, says go ahead and start kissing. I can I'll be able to control it. Nobody just order go whole body. No, he says flee because this is something that you cannot actually contend with. You can't fight with it. You can't win. This is a fight, a battle that when you embark on it, if you know win. In Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-two, the Bible says, "Flee youthful lust." So anything that's going to make you start thinking about that sex, you know, and all of that, and like being consumed by that thought, the Bible says, "Flee." So if it's your socials, you know, these days you can't even check on your Instagram. You can't even check for complete five minutes without seeing somebody saying, eh, me lele, na me be this, na me be this, you know. So you have to be careful. If it's your Instagram, if it's your social that is going to make you to, you know, fall into sin and make you have that so much strong urge that you will not be able to control, then flee it. Avoid it. Avoid all appearance of evil. Like Joseph in the Bible, when Potiphar's wife approached him and she held his clothes what did he do he didn't drag with her and say madam wait come 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 i'm going to take care of you or don't worry i can't do it he didn't even explain anything no more he run he leave the cloth for her make she hold her me run because you know that thing you cannot fight with it how many men can truly say that mad talk about man no maybe you know what this we get different kind of people now some now man woman some now woman man Talking about a real man, how many real men can truly say that when you see a naked woman standing stark naked in front of you, how many of you can truly say that I can like put it together and I will not fall for this temptation? I'm already hard though. 
in the heart. That is why the Bible says, flee. Don't contend with it. Don't try to explain it. Don't try to fight it. Run away as fast as your legs can carry you because that journey, if you start time, you know the end. And for some people, there are certain kind of friends you need to also flee away from. Yes, there are friends that don't give good advice. You hear things like what's in the day, I know be your wife. You never go see the parent. Ah, now your wife, now what's in the door yourself? For people like that will always want to counter what you stand for. So if you have people like that in your life, you need to minimize the way you hang around them. Flee from them because they know they send you better message. They are going to mess up with what you planned for yourself and what God has ultimately planned for you. Like there's this popular quote that says that 20 friends cannot be friends forever. At some point, some people will go their separate ways because now our convictions do not align. My principles do not align with you. What I believe in now does not align with you. I am not that Wendy of 15 years ago or that Wendy of 20 years ago. I am now a changed person. I have a path that I'm working on now. So if our convictions are contradictory to each other, then we cannot remain friends. And that is why they say 20 friends cannot be friends forever. There are so many advantages of maintaining sexual purity while you're still dating. Number one is going to strengthen your character. I mean, if you're able to discipline yourself, you know, a whole body, you know, is you. This is like the one of the highest tests you can get in this life. You know, easy, but if you feel whole body, especially when you're not a virgin, because there's something about virgins, when you've not had this experience before, most times, even when you're faced with a naked woman or a naked man, you may not feel no move. You know why? Because you've actually not done this before. So there is something that has not been unlocked in you. But if you're someone who has, you know, been very, very active in time past, you don't do yellow, you don't do black, you don't do every, every. You don't do all the styles. Now you won't come meet person. And you guys are now agreeing that you're going to stay celibate until you're married. It not go easy you. But you see, at last, last, when you maintain this sexual celibacy and you maintain this purity and you come into marriage, it has a lot of advantage. Then you would have strengthened your character. And then there is almost a little percentage of guarantee that you're going to stay faithful to each other. Number two, it means that there is something you're looking forward to in that marriage. Stolen waters are very sweet. When you're stealing it, nobody they know, nobody that one, they're very delicious. But when you're now out in the open and everybody now knows that, yes, you're fully married, you're couple certified and all of that, now it becomes boring. Why? Because every, every, you don't do and pass. So when you maintain this purity, you have something to look forward to, something to look up to, which is very interesting and which would help you bond well in that marriage. Now, the big question in the mind of almost everyone, even you, when they watch me, the question in your mind right now is, hey, but if I don't do this, how am I going to know that we are compatible sexually? Hey, what if she's the kind of person that I cannot do? Or what if he's not even a man? You know, the truth is, hey, when you're convinced in your mind that this person is the one you want to spend the rest of your life with trust me every single person that has ever been married in the right way there is this level of conviction you have in your mind there is this certainty you feel when you're around the person that this is the one when you get to that point and you're convinced that this person is your soulmate there is no question of whether he's going to be compatible with you sexually or not because, you know, even in the process of dating, sometimes when you just hug, just, you know, small side hug, or John Thomas done, you know. So you would know that this person at least not complete man, and you're convinced in your heart. There is something about conviction. If that person no go give you joy last, last, it day your mind, now you just know one listen to that voice. You know, we're spiritual beings. If you embrace your spiritual self, eh, most times before you do something, your mind will tell you, your body will give you. But most times what happens with us is that we, we don't pay attention to our spiritual mind. Sometimes your mind will be telling you that, don't do this, don't go this way, don't go to this place, don't give him that thing, don't do that thing. You just be like, eh, let me just, let me just, you know. Because you numb the voice inside of you. When you allow that voice inside of you to be alive, to speak with you, honestly, you will almost not make mistakes. So when you're convinced, that is a point. When you're truly convinced in your mind and you're certain and you have prayed about it. Because last, last, not be God go give you husband, not be God go give you wife. The Bible says that he that finds a wife finds a good thing. In other words, now you go find your husband, now you go find your wife. God does not give you any wife. 
don't, God does not give you any husband. But what he does is that when you ask him for something and you ask for a certain kind of person, he's going to bless you with that kind of person. So when you eventually find that person, there is this level of peace you feel within your mind. Whenever you're around that person, there is this peace you feel that you can, you know, you can almost not give away for anything. So once you're convinced, trust me, you can almost know that, yes, this person, now your person, this one is the one for you. And most times, Seth, the reason why people have problems is because you would have tasted so much. You don't do this one. You don't do that one. You don't date like 75 men already before you want to come marry. The experience, eh? Oh, more plenty for your head. You don't see different, different type of rishi, rishi. So when you now eventually get married, you know, you have so many images in your head and it's going to mess up your mind and it's going to confuse you and it's going to make you not appreciate what God has given to you. That is the reason why young people are encouraged not to have these experiences. And because, you know, the devil is wicked. He's, he's the antichrist. Everything that God has designed, he's here to corrupt. God designed sex to be enjoyed within the confines of marriage is here to corrupt it and say no you go ahead and have it on the street have it everywhere waiting waiting god they talk i beg you leave that one is that not what you told eve in the in the garden of eden he said why why won't you eat this fruit eat some your eye go open he doesn't want you to know the difference between good and bad that's why he's saying you should not eat this one why won't you eat this one and eve self carry chop you know so he's here to corrupt every single thing that god has created he doesn't have the ability to create anything so when you listen to him you know he's going to corrupt your mind and you keep having all these experiences all of these men you've seen all of these women you've seen and you know you've seen different types and now you're here with your wife and you know it begins to play in your mind I know because of all the ties and everything all these people you've seen it begins to play in your mind and you begin to look at your wife or your husband like ah, she's not even fine no you know package this message can never be overemphasized because the damage it actually brings upon marriages and upon relationships they are so much that is why it's very advisable keep your body keep yourself you're helping your future you're helping yourself without even knowing it and as i said before there is room for improvement there is room for learning so nobody is an island of knowledge nobody knows it all we learn every day we experience this thing every day and we keep improving and growing every day of our life. Thank you for watching. My name is Wendy Zil. If you enjoyed this video and this video is a blessing unto you, please give it a thumbs up so that it can be spread more to other people. And also consider subscribing if you have not done so yet to join the family for more content like this. God bless you. Stay blessed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.